Hello and welcome to this first video tutorial to get you started with Instant Terror and help you create your first terrain. This is the Instant Terror interface at startup. It consists of a visual representation of my terrain and a viewport. The different nodes that allow me to compose a terrain are found in the graph. We'll come back to this part in more detail, but for the moment let's look at the possible interactions in the viewport. To pan the terrain in space, left click, hold the mouse button and drag the mouse. To rotate the camera around the area of the terrain under the mouse cursor, right click on an area, hold the right mouse button and drag the mouse. Scrolling the mouse wheel allows me to zoom in and out in successive stages. When I click the mouse wheel I can zoom in or out of my terrain with the focus on my cursor position. That's it for the 3D view controls by default. If you're already used to working with 3D software, you will find in camera mode, in the camera menu, different camera styles that will probably be more familiar to you. Also, in the preferences in the edit menu, we can modify the interface theme. Let's see now the possible interactions in the graph. Left click to select a node. Left click and control allows me to select several nodes one after another. To select multiple nodes, press shift and drag the mouse over the nodes to select. When I right click in the graph, I access the create node menu, which contains all the nodes that can be added to compose my terrain. Each node is a mathematical operation that combines with others to create an increasingly rich graph. Take for example, a terrain generator. To move a node in the graph, I left click, hold the mouse button and drag the mouse. Also, let's take a transformer. By left clicking on the node's output module, I create a link that lets me connect it to another node. Once this new node is linked, its results are added to the previous nodes that make up my terrain. I can select a link and right click on it to delete it, or select it and use the delete keyboard shortcut. I can also delete a node in the same way. Now let's add another transformer. When I double click on a node, I open a new window containing its parameters. I can modify the parameters as I like and see the result directly in real time in the viewport. For more details on a node, simply click on the question mark to access the relevant page in the documentation. We've also posted short video tutorials on YouTube on some specific nodes. We'll now see, with the help of this rather simple graph, how to create the terrain we saw in the introduction. It consists of a Perlin noise node, a slope node, a painted mask node, a sum using mask node, and a hydraulic erosion node. We'll create a new project, so I start by pressing shift and left click to delete the default nodes. Then I right click and select create node, then terrain generation, and add the Perlin noise and slope nodes. In the slope node parameters I change the height and set inclination angle to create a constant height of 400 meters. Once this is done, I select Terrain Composition and then the Sum node that will allow me to combine the parameters of the two input nodes. Notice that my new terrain has both the 400 meter height of the slope node and all the parameters inherited from my Perlin noise node. What would be interesting now would be to drive this composition using a mask. To do so, right click on the Sum node, select Switch to any node and select the Sum using Mask node. This composition node now requires a mask to work, so I right click and select create node, then mask generation, and add the painted mask node. For now there's no difference between the sum using mask node and the Perlin noise node. 
This is simply due to the fact that my painted mask is black, so the slope node parameters are not taken into account. We need to edit the mask and apply a touch of pure white to our terrain. Here's the result. In the place where I painted, the painted mask is white, my pearl and noise mask retrieves the slope node properties and the terrain is elevated to 400 meters. I'm going to reset my mask. What's interesting now, rather than painting with pure white, is to set the brush intensity to 0.15 and the fall off to 0.5 to get a much more nuanced composition on my terrain. With this principle, I can then proceed in levels to obtain the characteristic form that we saw previously. Once this is done, I right click again and select Create Node, then Simulation, and add the Hydraulic Erosion node to create more realism on my terrain. At this point, if I'm not satisfied with the result, an instant terror feature allows me to lock the view of the selected node. It can also be activated via the spacebar on the keyboard. This allows me to go back to any previous node in my graph and modify the parameters while I keep the current view in the viewport. Once I'm satisfied with my terrain, I can export it to a 3D software package. To do this, I have a choice of export nodes. The first is an export mesh node to export my terrain as an FBX file. And the second is an export terrain node to export my terrain as a height map. In this node, I can preview the result in the viewport using the icon in the toolbar or the M keyboard shortcut. All I need to do now is choose the appropriate export format. And here is the result we get once we've imported our terrain into a game engine, such as Unreal Engine. Thank you for watching this video and see you soon for the next tutorial.